Hi, my name is Andrew Hoskins. Has music had a major influence on your life? I know for me it has played a major role in my decision making since I first picked up a guitar back in the year 2000. In this video I'm going to discuss how I would not be where I am today if it were not for the importance music has played in my life. So ever since I was young, I always sang along to the songs on the radio, usually the stuff from the 90s, but uh, anything I knew the words to. Um, the Beach Boys uh, was one of my favorite tapes. Anytime I felt any type of down feelings, I would just ask to put it on and immediately felt be better. Ba 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 you got me rockin' and rollin', rockin' and a reelin', Bob Aran, ba 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 Went to a dance, saw Bob Aran, thought I'd take a chance, and I knew I'd take a chance at Bob Aran. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I had the Hanson tape uh, with Mbop on it. Mm bop dink a doo blop doo wop. Skibby da ba boo wop dink a doo blop doo. Yeah, um, I used to listen to the 90s radio, alternative radio stations, uh, and sit at my desk for hours and hours drawing uh, hybrid supersonic Super Saiyan guys with scouters on their face, power levels over 9,000. Loved, you know, chicka to Chinese, Chinese chicken. You have a strum stick in your brain, stop chicken. Watching X Files with no lights on, with Dalla Maze on. Yeah, right? Funny 90s stuff. Um, I remember Alanis Morissette, uh, Jagged Little Pill, was one of the first CDs I like listened to over and over again. It was my parents' CD, and I just borrowed it. Um, go Down on You in a Theater, right? Uh, I think the first album I asked for was the President of the United States, who, uh, um, who did millions of peaches, peaches for me, millions of peaches, peaches for free. Look out! And then they did lump, lump, sad, alone in a buggy marsh, totally emotionless except for heart. Mud flowed up into lumps pajamas. She totally confused all the passing piranhas. She's lump. She's lump, she's in my head. Yeah, right? Um, my first major girlfriend taught me how to skank, uh, taught me about like cool pop punk and ska and stuff that I had never heard of before, um, other than what I happened to hear on the radio possibly at that time. The first major show I ever played uh, with the band I had in high school that was called How About That, which was a ska punk band um was the schools out skank out um it was kind of like a diy um festival uh that was put together by like kind of the local scene um and it was like right after the end of the school year um we were with playing that show with like other big local ska bands um that were holding it down in the scene at that time i remember having the second biggest like mosh pit or like a uh, circle pit um during us doing a cover of brain stew we had a bunch of people from the audience come up and sing the song with us it was a lot of fun i remember going to my first major festival which was called ska summit and asking my first major girlfriend uh out after the event was over and we were like going home and stuff we stopped off at a park we usually hung out at a lot and um i had her go up to the top of like a big hill um and close her eyes and i wrote um her name you know and asked her to be mine in gasoline uh mixed with uh styrofoam uh, on the road and lit it on fire and told her to open her eyes and she said yeah and you know life happens and you know I'm, that was a long time ago but yeah that was cool so i went to college um because that's what you do after high school um was gonna go for com digital art 
and I decided I would drop out and or I wanted to change my major to music and then I was like well I'm just gonna have all this debt and not gonna be able to pay it off with any uh, thing I can do with my education so I'll just go out and learn by doing by playing all the time um, so I you know met some people who were from San Antonio who I was working next to uh, I was at a pizza place they were at a coffee shop and we just started hung, hanging out all the time and you know they got done living in Vegas and decided they wanted to go back to San Antonio and wanted to take me with them and I wanted to go do other things with my life and so I went down there started working at an IHOP or as a short order cook egg cook and learned how to flip eggs over easy make everything on that menu made enough money for buying a little car that was like 600 bucks uh, and get it insured and everything it was a white Chrysler LeBaron um, with like a Frankenstein engine that didn't belong in it that was all put together um, but it worked and I drove 26 hours from San Antonio to Reno to meet up with my buddies who I had uh, seen busking on MySpace up in Reno and I wanted to go back and start hanging out with them so I joined the Starving Musicians. Some of the people from that were old friends of mine from high school like uh, my friend who I played in a, that band with called How About That in high school um, and his sister who inspired me to start traveling and stuff. She basically started hitchhiking around um, and then went to New Orleans and I you know got some money up got a new van um, and went down and was gonna meet up with her and uh, spent like three months living out of my van in New Orleans busking on in the French Quarter to make money to get by uh, met my dog there who was part of like probably a dog fighting house maybe used as a bait dog got all the male dogs all riled up and then they got her pregnant and then she had puppies and then probably was kicked out or got away or something uh, when I met her she was just skin and bones and her little nipples hanging down all the way to the ground um, it's real sad but she's the best dog I've ever met lady dog um, for those of you who know her uh, some of the albums I had on that drive down to New Orleans were a spoon album a bright eyes album and a shins album and anytime I hear songs from those, it reminds me right of that time in my life. Wrote an album called 2000 Great before I had left to go to uh, Reno to play with the starving musicians. Um, and so I had a whole album worth of stuff to use um, and give away. Uh, one of the songs I still play from that is Yono Say and my friend um, who was in the starving musicians got me one day to, it used to be, I, I don't know, and she was like, why don't you sing it in Spanish for some reason, and I just started doing it, and it never changed, so now it's, yo no, yo no sé. While I was in New Orleans, I made some musician friends. I survived busking uh, for money in the French Quarter, um, eating, you know, leftover food from people kicking it down while I was playing um, or eating out of garbage or you know spending a little bit of money on a po' boy. We started a band uh, called The Music Box with like a fluctuating number of people as we like pick people up and let and people dropped off as we like drove along. Uh, we went all the way up to Bellingham, Washington, recorded a big old album and then drove all the way back to NOLA um, and everybody dispersed. We were all sick of each other after four months started traveling with a couple of my buddies um, eventually decided that we wanted to go train hopping um, that was the one of the biggest ventures in my life uh, you know played music on trains you know wrote music on trains uh, played dice on trains um, just lived on trains breathed tr trains in the train yards uh, I still hear the the horn blowing and I'm like feel like I'm at home. We played shows and busked and wrote music in 46 states. Uh, I didn't go to Alaska, Hawaii, no, uh, North Dakota, or Delaware. Um, we called the group I was playing with Home Billy and the Hill Bums for a while, um, and then later we shaved our heads and we called ourselves Sinead and the O'Connors was pretty funny. Uh, I met my wife in Houston traveling through by myself at one time. Um, I call my buddy 
to see if he knew anybody in Houston who I might be able to get their number and try to reach out to them and see if we can hang out. Um, he said he would look. Uh, he knew someone there, but wasn't sure if he could find her number. He wasn't able to find it. Um, and when I was walking through the city to go to the other end of town to hitch out in the morning, I uh, was walking along Richmond and a girl pulled over on her bike and was like, hey, you know, are you looking for a place to stay? Back of the way, there's a, you know, anarchist bookstore that's doing like an art showing by the Beehive Collective. There's going to be a bunch of people there. Maybe you'll meet someone who will be open and allow you to sleep at their house or something like that who knows and i was like yeah sure sounds like a great idea so i went over there um wasn't really watching too much of the art showing so i was just like hanging out front of the uh place with my backpack my dog and my guitar and i saw this girl sitting up front uh on a bench and she was smoking a cigarette i didn't have any so i was like you know oh well i had rolling cigarettes but i wanted a tailored cigarette so I went and asked her for one and within 30 seconds to a minute or so I had realized that she was this girl that I had asked my friend if he had an, uh, her number and he didn't and I asked her if she knew him and she said she did and I was like well it's crazy so I just sat there with her for like an hour or so listening to her talk about her ex-boyfriend and she was working at an overnight diner up the way and she said she was going there to work overnight that night and I asked her if I could just come sit at a table and drink coffee and write in my journal um, she said sure and then afterwards we hung out and drank beers and ate breakfast tacos and kissed on a couch it was great we stayed in town for a couple weeks and you know kind of just didn't really know what to do you know just kind of moved on and uh, lost my phone lost tre you know touch with Allie uh, or with my wife or uh, yeah and uh, about a year goes by and I go back home to Vegas to visit with my parents and stuff for a holiday and I download MySpace like Messenger for the first time or whatever. Um, first time doing a chat app or whatever uh, for MySpace or anything like that. And Allie was on there and I just reached out to her. I know I haven't talked to you in over a year and I know I haven't talked to you for a year and I'm a jerk but you know, how's it going? And she was like, yeah, you are a jerk. But yeah, I'm I'm alive. Uh, <laughs> and when I, and then I started talking to her like every day, I talked to her like overnight until like 3 a.m. most nights. And um, she asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And I said I wanted to come live with her. And so on New Year's, I drove to, or I took a, bus to Houston and she picked me up at the Greyhound station and yeah uh, we started hanging out and uh, we started traveling and uh, playing music uh, just random places to make money and then we got pregnant and so we moved back to Houston and uh, some of the first friends I met here in Houston were uh, Whitney and Jesse. Um, they were in a band called Days and Days, and I started playing shows with them and doing open mics, and we all went on a tour together. It was their first uh, tour outside of Texas, and I kind of showed them the ropes about like how to gas chug, um, how to uh, eat out of garbage cans, how to busk and make money. That was an amazing experience. They're great people. Uh, at a friend's house, we watched a Kit Kittredge movie, uh, one of the American Girl movies, and uh, she was basically hanging out with these hobos uh, that came into town, and also some uh, magicians came into town who were like stealing stuff from people, and then they were like framing these hobos, and Kit Kittredge like got to the bottom of it, got to know these hobos, um, found out it was the magicians, and cleared the hobos' names. Uh, through like getting to know these hobos, they learned a few cool hobo things, like uh, different like hobo hieroglyphs uh, that mark certain things that hobos might want to know like this is the way to camp or this is where the hop out spot is um one of the cool things we saw was like a fishbone kind of look and that is like good garbage this is a place you can come to get food out of the trash that is good um and we kind of adopted that and i have it you know tattooed on my arm right if you can see that 
The fish bone right there, good garbage. Yep. Now I started working at Denny's for a while and then I got a retail job that I've been at for like eight years now. Um, but there was a while I was like trying to make a little extra money by delivering pizzas and I met a guy named Jason uh, who was also do doing the same thing for a short period of time. This little window we were both working at this this pizza place together uh, started talking about how we both play music and you know started hanging out every once in a while, jammed a few times and then you know he started playing all my songs with me at shows and a uh, long time later you know one of my old friends who uh, played in other bands uh, like You Not I and Sidewalk Slammers. He, you know, basically saw us play one time and was like, I'm gonna play bass for that band. And he asked us and we were like, finally we have a bassist, absolutely you should play with us. You're an excellent person and great fit. Um, so yeah, we now, uh, we were called Radio Flyer. I've been calling my music Radio Flyer since back in t 2000. Three, I guess I've been calling it that and Radio Flyer finally reached out to us after I had like started making a name for us um, and said cease and desist and so we had to take down our Facebook and all this and uh, we started coming up with new names and after a long 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 process like picking a baby's name we came up with slummer um, so like a guy hangs around the slums S L U M M E R band cam you can find that music a lot of the decisions I've made have been based off of music and where music has led me. Riding trains and playing music across the country was the greatest adventure I'd ever had up until now where I, you know, am now a father and that is now the greatest adventure I am embarked on. Um, but it is a lot of inspiration for my music and it keeps me uh, wanting to go on. Um, I love playing music and I love expressing myself through music. If I could not play music uh, or write, I think I would go crazy. So yeah, music is a major part of my life and I think it has a big influence on all of us. Um, so hope you enjoyed this video and uh, maybe I will make some more in the future. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andrew Hoskins. 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 I know for me, it has played a major role in the decision makings. My name is Andrew Hoskins. It has played a major role. That's how it I would not be where I am today if it were not for the importance music has played in my life.